Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergaga.com and in this video we are going to calculate the number of working days until a deadline date. So I have a simple example on screen of five tasks and then five deadline dates that are in the future. Now at the time of recording this video it is the 29th of March at 2019. So all five of those dates are in the future. And it is a Friday as well. Now, it does not come as a surprise, I'm sure, that Excel has a function which has the ability to calculate the number of working days between two dates. So this is going to be quite simple to do. And this function is called network days. So as long as we know that, we can bring up this function and we can see there's actually two versions of it as well. There's the first one, which will assume that your weekend is a Saturday and a Sunday and that you would like to ignore that. It's not a working day and to exclude it from the calculation. And then the second one, this international version, allows us to specify when our weekend is. So it's much more flexible. We could say that we do a six day week and Sunday is the, the weekend, if you will, or maybe it's a Friday and a Saturday. Now I'm going to demonstrate both in this video, but let's start with the first one and that will prompt us for a start date, an end date, and then an optional question of some holiday dates. So some non-working days really. Now the start date, I'm going to put the today function in. So we have a dynamic way of tracking what today's date is. And this will continue to work tomorrow and next week and next month and so on. And then a comma and I'll select the cell to the left, which is the end date in this example, cell B2. At this point, I'm going to close off this function. I don't have to do the holidays question. It's optional. I'm going to demonstrate that in a moment. But just to prove for now that it works without that information. And this calculation is excluding all Saturday Sundays from this calculation between the two dates. Now an interesting thing to take into account here is that the deadline of the 1st of April is this coming Monday for me. Today is a Friday the 29th. Notice how it returns the answer of two. So it's excluding the Saturday and Sunday tomorrow and the day after that but it's counting the day that I'm living right now and the end date of the 1st of April is including this date in its calculation. So if you're not happy with that, you might want to think about either throwing in a subtraction of one on the end, because maybe you think there's only one day until that date, uh, depending uh, on the logic and what you're after. Or you may have to think about bringing in some if functions for more intense logic. But that is saying there are two days. There is today and then there is also the 1st of April itself in that calculation. Now what I have done here, at the bottom I have a non-working days tab. And I have a Good Friday and also the Monday that follows it off as they are considered uh, bank holidays here in the UK for Easter. And that might be something that you would like to exclude in your calculation. It also might not, you know, it's not a non-working day for everything. But let's imagine that they are for this example. Please bear in mind that you can write any dates you wish here. So whatever is a non-working day for your scenario can simply be written here. Bank holidays is obviously a very common thing for people to use, but it's certainly not the only reason work is not done on some kind of task, project, office or whatever. So back into our function, if I double click to open it up and click just before the close in bracket and put in a comma, that will prompt me for the holidays and I can now select my other sheet and select those two cells. Up in the formula bar, I can see the reference to the other sheet and to those cells and I will press my F4 key on my keyboard to make it an absolute reference. So that when I press enter, coming back to the other sheet, and I copy my formula down, take a look at these answers they're about to change, then 
it continues to work. And even as I look at the one that was affected by that, the 23rd of April, it is still looking at the correct two cells because of the absolute reference. So that 19th and that uh, 22nd, I think it was, uh, are now excluded from this calculation. It was 18, it's now only 16 working days. Now there was another one, wasn't there? There was a Network Days International. So let me select this one. And you can see that the only difference, if I zoom in on this, we have the start date, so that's today, the end date, that's B2, and then after that, let me put in another comma here, so in this gap here, we have a question of the weekend. So the last question now is the holidays, which I still have, but now we have this additional option of weekend. Now if I can just backspace that comma and type it back in, that will trigger the list of options. So we can specify when is your weekend. And the first option is Saturday and Sunday. So we could have just used this function instead of the original network days. We don't really need the original network days anymore because this one can do what that one can do and more. Let's imagine for this example that Sunday only is a weekend now. That is the only weekend day in this particular scenario that I'm using. And they'll put the index value of 11 for that. If I press enter, it's now three days because it's including that Saturday as well. Today, tomorrow, and Monday. And if I drag that down, we are now getting an increase in values because we are doing a six-day week instead of a five-day week for this scenario. So that is the network days and the network days international uh, functions. And we can use those to calculate the number of working days until a deadline. Remember what I mentioned at the start of this video that we come subtract a value from the end of it. Uh, so I could put a takeaway one in there if I wanted to exclude the end date from the calculation because it's normally included in it. So the 1st of April is also included a date in its calculation, which you may not necessarily agree with. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out some of our other video tutorials on our YouTube channel and come check us out at computergaga.com.